All right, guys, thank you guys for checking out this video slash mini course. It's going to be all about the inside position in a right side versus left side setting. So this is sort of the 101 section where we look at what a right side versus left side setting looks like. Right? In Japanese, they traditionally call this kenkaiyotsu, right? So there's ayotsu and kenkaiyotsu. Most of the time, if you're kind of a beginner doing judo in the dojo somewhere, it's mostly going to be the case that a lot of you people are going to be right-sided, right? So that looks like this. Right versus right, lapel, lapel, sleeve, sleeve, okay? Right versus left, or kenkaiyotsu position, is going to be the opposite side, okay? Where we have our lead leg or opposite legs, my right leg versus his left leg. Okay, so I have inside position, Kevin has outside position, now we have the sleeve and the sleeve. Okay, so this is going to be specifically what we're going to look at today, the inside position. So we're going to cover what it's going to look like from an advantageous point of view, how to get to the inside position, right, and then obviously a couple of different attacks, right. And within that, there's going to be a lot of ideas about angling, right, what my angles are, what sort of the misdirectional things that I'm looking for, and how to gain advantage, and how to outmaneuver my opponent. Traditionally, inside versus outside, right? A lot of people think inside is always better. That's not necessarily the case, right? Because if Kevin knows how to be on the outside position, he does it really, really well, he's gonna know how to counter all the inside stuff, right? For instance, if he throws his elbow in between the body here, now he's created this frame, this structure, that's going to prevent me from encro encroaching on his body here, okay, which is going to be very, very difficult for me. From this position, if he wants to keep his elbow here, we have the sleeve, right? If he wants to not let me open this arm, right, because of the position of his arm, right, it's like this, it's very, very difficult for me to untangle this arm here, okay? But if Kevin wants to move this arm out of the way to throw his hips across, all he has to do is move it, and now, right, it's a lot easier because his position of his arm is in a lot better position, it's a stronger position, right? So, it's not always the case that the inside position is better. Okay, let's look at a little bit of an extreme example. If he goes over the back, okay, and he's able to pull me in and crunch my arm, now I don't control this distance. The, what I mean by this is that if I want to create distance, I'm going to have a very hard time pushing from this angle, okay? His pulling strength here is a lot stronger than my pushing strength in the position of my arm. Okay, so if I don't really know what I'm doing here, and he has a sleeve, and now he's unloading Sasai, Ogoshi, Koshigumi, all this stuff, right? That's going to cause me a lot of trouble, right? Obviously, this is the case where inside position is not better, because he's dominating me on the outside. So, what does it look like? Good inside position versus good outside position, right? We're definitely going to cover a little bit more of that as well. This first part, what I want to go through, right, is how to get that hand on that lapel to fight for the inside position. Right? We talked a little bit about the inside and the outside already, uh, and talk a little bit about body styles. Right? Generally, if I'm much shorter than the person, I don't want to go right <laughs> outside. If he grabs his lapel, it's going to be very difficult. It's a much longer distance. So if I'm much shorter than the person, going inside is always going to, usually going to make sense. Right? So if you're a much shorter person in a heavier division, for instance, when I used to fight at hundreds, right, in the international circuit, I'm five nine on, on the <laughs> On a good day, some of these guys are six three, six four. Four. Lucas Kropalik, who's a little tall lefty, right? There's no way I'm gonna do anything in the outside position, so I had to fight for the inside position, right? So, how to get this hand on the inside position? Sometimes we come out here in the most blessing of blessings, right? Kevin comes out, he likes outside, I like inside. I'm shorter, he's taller. We cool? Okay, so now we don't have to fight for anything. Okay, lapel sleeve. This may potentially happen. There's still going to be a battle of advantages here, right? Maybe he wants to pull me down, maybe he wants to go over the back, okay? In this case, it's very, very easy. But what if we both like inside position? If Kevin puts his hand on first and he wants the inside position, obviously if I go to the outside, he's not gonna do anything. If I go to the inside, he doesn't want me to get the inside, he blocks. I can't get it, I'm not gonna stand here, right? And be at the mercy of all his weapons, so I'm gonna have to settle to the outside. Ah, but I wanted the inside position don't have it, right? This is going to cause me lots of trouble down the line. So, the person who gets their hand on first determines whether you get inside or outside, okay? If I have the hand on first and he goes inside, I deny him. And as he's going back to the outside, look, I post his hand high to gain advantage and gain tempo. Okay, so it's a little bit closer here. 
He goes underneath. Nope. If he goes to the outside, that's okay. Right? Because now as he get it, create this frame. Look at the position of his arm. Not as strong. And as he's going for this lapel, look, I could go for the sleeve. And once I have this position, look, I want to put a twist in his upper body. Okay? That way, I beat this sleeve past this center line. Okay? If all things being equal here, same, same. Sleeve, sleeve. Right? No bandages here, really. But if I could pull his arm towards me just a little bit, long arm versus short arm, now I'm a lot closer to my turn throws than he is to his, right? So that's what I'm looking for. All right, easier said than done though. Put the hand on first, right? How do we put the hand on first is the big question. How do we do that, right? First, I know generally, right, versus left, he's gonna to wanna to put his hand on his collar, I parry the hand, and then I push the hand on. So now when he goes grab the inside the felt look, I could deny it. As he goes back to the outside, post, sleeve, maybe on a sotagari. Maybe if I have an a sotagari, right? He's coming for his lapel look, I parry, hand goes to the lapel, okay? That's one method. You could reverse this. Kevin has his hands out, right? As I'm going, he parries his hand. Ah, parries his hand, I can't get it. Right? So now, I think, hand goes by, and then I punch his hand. Okay? Doesn't always work. <laughs> but generally, this is a good start on how to put the hand on first. Okay? I've seen people do this. Catch his hand, right? Sleeve or hand, down, lapel, feet, inside, no, outside, sleeve. Okay? Fake, OG. Okay? Something like this is very, very common, right? So then we have three methods of putting the hand on the collar, right? There's always a sort of a danger, right? In letting the person put their hands on first, take that initiative. Because I really want the inside, he might not get, give it to me. But maybe he likes outside position. And if I go inside, he goes, yeah, take it. Okay, right? But he's not gonna just let me take it. Once he has his hand down, as I'm going for it, He's already looking to gain position, right? So now this hand is already controlled. I'm looking to free this arm. He's already attacking, second hand on, okay? In this case, he grabbed the collar because my hand was back. As I'm coming to grab the sleeve, he goes, loops back around. Now he has his sleeve, and now I'm done, right? This is a very, very difficult position to be in, especially if Kevin refined his Hayatoshi or something for many, many years, right? There's a good chance that he could time this, boom, split second. And even if he doesn't, he's in a good position to start bombarding me with attacks. 